In our previous lesson on population dynamics, we were able to understand what is a population change. So a population change helps us understand what are the different factors that leads to a change in population of a particular geographical area at a specified period of time. But for a government, knowing only the change in population or just reading the change in population will not be enough. The government needs to act on the changes as per time and for doing so, it needs to have a clear idea about the population it is working for. So for that, the government needs to know which are the different age group or sex group that needs the attention most from the government. Where does the government needs to spend its resources correctly and wisely and understand what are the different gender disparities that it needs to address and what are the inequalities that it needs to work for. So for any government, only by knowing the change in population is not enough. The government has to be aware whether which age group needs the attention most, where does it need to spend its resources and how does it need to do that, how should it formulate or design its policies so that it can cater to the gender disparities that exist in the society and it should plan its course of action accordingly as per the needs of the population that it is working for. We have understood the meaning of population dynamics and we have also understood that the population dynamics is a study of the change in population. So for a government to work for its population, it needs to have a clear idea of the population. So in our previous lessons on population dynamics, we understood that population census helps us understand the age composition or age breakup of the population and we also understood that from population census, we can derive the sex ratio of a particular country. So if we put these two aspects, the age breakup or age composition of a country and the sex ratio of the country together and we can do that with the help of a population pyramid. Now what exactly is a population pyramid? So to understand the distribution of people of different gender and age groups, we use a diagram. So here is a diagram or a graphical representation of the distribution of people where we are seeing two aspects the gender the distribution of how two genders are distributed in a particular population and also the age group where we're seeing the breakup of the different age groups in a particular population so through a diagram or a graphical representation of the same we call this a population pyramid or age sex pyramid right so we are covering two aspects of population under one diagram now such diagrams helps us understand how the male and female population of a particular country is distributed and it also helps us understand the conditions that prevail in a particular country of that population now how is that so take for example this particular graphical representation of a developing country so for a developing country like this, we see that the male population is higher than the female population in every age group, right? So this is only because of the ignorance of lack of awareness and lack of education, right? So a population pyramid helps us understand the distribution of gender and age groups of a particular population. Now, why do we call it a pyramid? This is mostly because of the shape of the diagram or the shape of the distribution of the population. Now, so population pyramid, if we need to define it, we'll say that it is a graphical representation, as I mentioned a while ago, of the population based on age-wise increase or decrease of male and female population in a country. So in any population pyramid, the female population is represented on the right side while the male population is represented always on the left side. So that was about the gender distribution. Other than that, the age breakup is represented at the center of the pyramid as you can see here where the distribution or the interval between the age group could be 5 that is 0 to 4 or it could be 10 that is 0 to 9. So for example, in this particular pyramid, we see that the interval between the age group is 5. So we started from 0 to 4, 5 to 9 and so on. So a population pyramid helps us understand the distribution of population based on age as well as male and female population. Now how do we study a population pyramid? So the lower part of the population pyramid. 
so in this particular diagram the lower part of the population pyramid which comprises of 0 to 4 years 5 to 9 years and 10 to 14 years age group so the lower part of the pyramid comprises of the younger population so the younger population or the child population is what we can see at the lower part of the diagram. Now this diagram tells us that the younger population is comparatively larger or more than the adult or the elderly population, right? So this pushes the government to improvise on its educational facilities, also to work on regular vaccination campaigns at local levels and to take extra care of the young population, preventing them from any sort of exploitation, for example, child labor. So this was the first section of the population pyramid. On going higher, we come to the middle portion of the pyramid. So the middle portion of the pyramid talks about the economically independent population or the working population. So in the previous slide where we talked about the younger population, that is a dependent population, they are not economically independent. Here we are talking about the middle portion of the pyramid that is economically independent or the working population. Now this comprises of age group between 15 to 19 years to 55 to 59 years, right? So the middle portion of the pyramid talks about the economically independent or working population of the country. Now finally at the very top we have the elderly or the aged population that is right here. So the upper portion of the pyramid shows as the elderly section of the population and this comprises of the age group from 60 to 64 to 100 and above. So the elderly population is the dependent population of the country which only means that the government needs to be very careful about the elderly population and work on strengthening its medical infrastructure. It also needs to focus on better retirement policies and better recreational programs for the elderly age group, right? So from the size of the population pyramid, the government will be able to understand which age group requires most attention, where the government needs to focus more and where the government needs to spend its resources, then how does it need to do that? So a population pyramid gives us the idea about the gender distribution of the population and also the age breakup of the population. And it is generally divided into three parts that is the lower portion talking about the younger population, the middle portion talking about the working population or the economically independent population and finally the upper part that talks about the aged or the dependent population. So far, we have understood how population pyramid shows us the age-wise breakup of male and female population in a particular geographical area or of a particular country for that matter. So population pyramid has another very good benefit. So if we get a chance to compare the population pyramid of two countries, like here we have the population pyramid of India and that of China. Right? So the comparison of two population pyramids helps us understand the population structure of two particular countries that are put into comparison and also how the male and female population is distributed. Right? It also helps us understand a lot of other things and we'll be learning about them as we proceed with this particular demonstration. So here we have two population pyramids. As you can see here, the population pyramid of India has a broader base. Uh, now, what does it tell us? Now, we have understood that the lower section of the population pyramid and the middle section comprises of the young population and the working population, right? And the uppermost portion comprises of the old age group, right? So, having a broader base tells us that the youth population of India is much more as compared to that of China. Now, China's population is highest in the late 40s. Now, this tells us that while India has more number of children to feed, so it has to concentrate and focus more on the nutrition and health facilities along with providing proper education to the young population. While China has less number of children to feed, 
So the huge amount of money that India is spending on feeding or providing enough nutrition to the young population is being saved by China, while China is investing that particular money in the working population, right? In the working population where it is providing more job opportunities, so it is investing that money to the job sector, right? Now, on the other hand, we also see that because the middle section is also a little wider than that of the uppermost section, that only means that India also needs to focus on providing enough jobs to so many people. So the young population are the ones who are comprising of the working population. So the job sector or employment sector needs to be focused on. Now, same goes with China. Now, China, as we can see, also has a good amount of working population. So it too needs to spend on the working population and provide enough job. So by this we also see that the working population has to take care of larger number of children while here the working population can save that money and invest more on improving their lifestyle. So not only the government is saving money but also the population who is working. Other than that, we see that the aged group is also very less. The medical infrastructure needs to be made stronger, right? And here we see that people in the late 40s to the aged people are comprising of the working population. However, we can see that the uppermost portion of the pyramid of China is not as narrow as India. That is, India needs to invest more and concentrate more on the medical infrastructure of its country. However, there is another important point that needs to be kept in mind. Here is what comes in the factor of demographic edge. Now, what exactly is demographic edge? So, India having a larger youth population is estimated to cross or do better than China in the coming years. Now, this is what is known as having a demographic edge over another country. Now, India's demographic edge over China is estimated to be higher in some years. This means that if India can utilize its youth population by investing rightly in its education and work opportunities, then definitely in some years, this estimation can be made true. India will have a demographic edge over China. As we can see that China's youth population is not as high as that of India. So if India utilizes the youth population rightly, then definitely this estimation can be made true. So we can see how population pyramid helps us understand important factors not only about the population, the age structure, the age composition, but also about important factors like economy that is dependent upon the demographic edge of any country. Now let us take an example of another country, Ethiopia. So what can you tell me from the population pyramid of Ethiopia? We can see that the population pyramid is increasingly narrowing as we go up. What does that mean? So with a high birth rate and death rate, this population pyramid represents an underdeveloped country. So for an underdeveloped country, it needs to like Ethiopia, the government needs to focus more on the medical facilities. So the government needs to focus more on the medical facilities and to strengthen its medical facilities so that the conditions can be improved so that people have better access to medical facilities and the problem of high death rate and birth rate can be solved. They also need to provide better awareness programs so that people are aware of the negative impacts of high death rate and birth rate. So this was about an underdeveloped country the situation is of a high death rate. So, if the number of elderly people is high in any country, the government needs to provide reliable and more responsive health care and security for its people. So, for any developing country or any country rather, where the number of aged people are more or where the death rate and birth rate is higher, the government needs to focus on the healthcare facilities that is not only responsive but also reliable and it also needs to focus on the security of the aged group. Another good example here is of a developing country like that of India. So this is the population pyramid of India of 2016. Now what do we say here? So from this particular pyramid, we can see that the base of the population is very bulky, which again says that the youth population is very large. 
So if we compare this particular population pyramid to that of Ethiopia, we see that the medical facilities has been improved. The birth rate is not directly shrinking to high death rate, right? So we see that there have been sustainable growth in the medical infrastructure and the population has better access to medical facilities. So for a developing country like India, where medical facilities have been improved, they need to work harder towards this so that even high death rate can be catered to. So a high number of children or the youth population of the country tells that the government needs to provide for their nutrition and educational facilities. So as it has already worked on the medical infrastructure and needs to focus more on that. On the other hand, with a large youth population, it also needs to focus on better nutrition and educational facilities. So this was about a developing country where we took example of India. So for a developing country like India, where it has a huge youth population there, providing right kind of employment opportunities, better prospects of higher education and better prospects of living, a healthy and educated population of the working age can contribute a lot towards country's economic development. So for a country like India with a large working population or large youth population, if the government is able to cater to the needs and provide the required opportunities to its youth population, then there is no turning back and this healthy and skilled population can actually lead to boosting the country's economy and lead to overall development of the country. Helps us realize the change in the size and structure of a population. But along with that, certain things like population pyramid also helps us better understand population dynamics. So population pyramid is a graphical representation of the age-wise distribution of male and female population in any given country. We also understood the structure of a population pyramid where we saw that the male population is represented on the left side while the female population is represented on the right side. Then there is also a representation of the different age groups that are usually at an interval of 5 years or 10 years in the middle of the pyramid. We further understood that the lower portion of the pyramid, while represents the young population or the dependent population, the middle section represents the independent population or the working age population. And finally, the upper portion of the pyramid represents again the dependent population, here referring to the elderly or the aged population of a country. We understood how comparison between two population pyramids of two different countries can help us understand the developments and the requirements that a country should focus on. It also helps us understand the different areas that needs more focus and more concentration or more work than the already existing portfolios that the government is focusing on. So population pyramid which represents the distribution of different age groups and also the distribution of the gender of male and female population in a country can help the government and the authorities at both national and local level to work on the areas that need to be focused on more. So finally, we understood that while reading population dynamics, population pyramid is one of the most important elements to look at. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.